today we're talking about reopening the economy. Although as a person locked in a queen's apartment, this kind of feels like having a debate over what to build on the vacant lot while the apartment building is still burning down. Don't worry about me though, the voices in my head tell me I'm doing just fine and staying completely sane. So what's the plan? Well first, when will we transition from a complete lockdown to a place where businesses are open and people can walk around? Let's not go crazy though, still no concert or sporting events, except maybe baseball. I think going to a Mariners game is still considered an acceptable form of social distancing. According to Trump's guidelines, a state can move into a less locked down state when it sees a consistent 14 day case reductions, hospitals can treat everyone using normal facilities, the state is able to test everyone with symptoms, and the state has a robust testing protocol. Well, that all makes a ton of sense. I'm both disappointed and relieved that there isn't much to make fun of there. So that's the bar from graduating from lockdown to phase 2. Next question, what does phase 2 look like? Well, here's where things get vaguer than Pete Buttigieg trying to answer a yes or no question. The plan says states have to have a robust testing protocol, but there are no guidelines for what that would look like. Robust testing is a cornerstone to reopening the economy, and I'm yet to find a suggestion that doesn't lean heavily on testing the American public so much that finals week looks like spring break. The goal here is to separate the infected from the healthy, so the healthy can get out, buy things, and get back to work, while everyone else recovers. Fortunately for you guys though, I've been binge watching think tank reports like their Tiger King episodes. And I think I've found three different approaches to phase 2 testing that governors are probably going to be looking at. First you have the more conservative American Enterprise Institute's protocols. The big push with this plan is to test a bare minimum of 750,000 people a week, starting with those who are showing symptoms and those who are exposed to those people who were showing symptoms. This would all be manually performed, so don't be surprised if you get a friend request from someone over at the CDC sometime soon. I cough once and all of a sudden Fauci's accidentally liking one of my vacation pictures from 5 years ago. Mr. Trump is expected to say that the federal government will help states pay for more medical personnel to help track the spread of the coronavirus by getting in touch with people who test positive to see who they might have had contact with in the last 3 or 4 days before they started showing symptoms. Hot tip for everyone with a secret life, maybe lay low for the next few weeks. If someone in that room coughs, the federales are going to be tracking you down. Now I want to leave the American Enterprise Institute's more republican plan and head over to the Center for American Progress's more liberal plan. Wow, not sure who to give the award for most pandering name to. The more left leaning plan is similar, but with a twist. Rather than your grandfather's contact tracing where a team of investigators have to figure out everyone an infected person came into contact with, what if I told you there was an app for that? In South Korea and Singapore, two nations that have suppressed transmission, the use of technology to conduct instantaneous contact tracing has been pivotal to their success. Yep, here's the part where some of you might want to start hoarding tinfoil like it's toilet paper so you'll have a lifetime supply of hats. We could use GPS, Bluetooth, cell towers, and Wi-Fi network data to identify whether the user's phone pinged the same signals as the phone of a COVID-19 positive individual during the same time period. From there, we could send the person immediately a message to get tested, and even create mobile alerts and public maps to inform the general public of the locations of COVID-19 cases. The argument is that there are currently just too many sick people for manual contact tracing. Even if we quarantine everyone who tests positive. Although 10% of the population is currently unemployed, so I think we could figure some them out. Now this fast tracking and warning system could also reduce the number of tests that need to be administered. And finally, this brings us to the economist Paul Romer's plan, which was a bit out there. Romer dedicated his life to improving the accuracy of growth models based on innovation, which recently earned him a Nobel Peace Prize. 
In this case, he was modeling the effect of different mitigation strategies on the growth of a pathogen. So what did he find? Well, his plan was to forget all that contact tracing and forget even producing an accurate test. Let's just keep it simple and test the American public at the wazoo. These benefits are available even with an imperfect test and without doing any contract tasting. It does take frequent testing, with each person getting tested roughly every two weeks. Specifically, his plan would see a random 7% of the population being tested every day, a frequency at which even an inaccurate test would be helpful. You got a false negative? <laughs> Don't worry, your number will probably come up again in a few days. His strategy is the pinnacle of quantity over quality and was designed not for efficiency, but rather to ensure that the economy could feasibly stay open with the fewest number of people in isolation at any one time. In his mind, it detects new cases before they spread and pop up on contact tracing's radar. An economy can survive with 10% of the population in isolation. It can't survive when 50% of the population is in isolation. Now one thing is clear from reading all of these plans, a critical part of reopening the economy is figuring out exactly who does and doesn't have the disease, by unleashing and maintaining a massive testing scheme. You might be able to limit the amount of tests you need each day by engaging in varying degrees of contact tracing, but whew, we are we still talking about so many tests. It's not just those test-loving politicians and theoretical economists who think this either. When the first conference call of President Trump's Economic Advisory Council to reopen the economy was held Wednesday morning, several business executives echoed a cry that health officials and state and local leaders had been making for weeks. The country needs more testing. Now This brings us to one final important question. Where are we going to get all of these tests? Well, that really is the million dollar question. Actually, it's the 30 billion dollar question. Frustratingly enough, there are a ton of articles complaining about a lack of testing, but very few listing solutions. There again seems to be a Democratic and Republican solution to this issue. Democrat solution is a congressional bill that would throw 30 billion dollars at the problem with the requirement that the administration deliver a clear detailed plan to rapidly scale and optimize COVID-19 testing. Really taking a leadership position on this one. Here's 30 billion dollars of government money, now go find a solution to this problem and bring it back to us. Remember to be detailed because we have nothing here. As Washington State Senator Patty Murray put it, what we say to the administration is, you need to show us how you are going to get to the production that we need to have rapid testing readily available in every community. I would expect they would have to use that act to get there, but if they have another way to get there, show us. Show us it's real. That's what this plan requires. Hey, maybe Trump will hit this one out of the park. I mean, he has given himself a 10 out of 10 on this pandemic response so far. Why try to assert congressional authority now? So far, the administration has not published a plan on how to ramp up testing, so I can't definitively answer the testing question. On the other side, though, you have the Republican plan, best explained by the Republican Senator and Chair of the Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, wow, busy guy, Lamar Alexander. He recently said, we have appointed the dollars. The issue is the government is not usually really good at fast production of anything. We need to create an environment where somebody outside the government can make the scientific discoveries and turn them into tens of millions and eventually hundreds of millions of tests. Testing manufacturers are ramping up production, considering that the hot summer items for this year are some strappy flip flops, some gold rimmed aviators, and a functional COVID-19 test. Anyone who's anyone has one. The most significant update from this came from the private company Abbott Labs, who plan to make and distribute 20 million tests per month starting in June, through a partnership with CVS. Forget hospitals, you can now pick up your medical test right next to the beef jerky. 
This, of course, opens up the ultimate challenging question for liberals. Who do you trust more to handle the crisis? Donald Trump or Big Pharma? Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello, YouTube. First, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking that link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.